this high right now. What drug did you just get? Okay, Claire, Claire, do we know anything about this How guy? How this guy been? What's his heart rate? Where's his heart rate that high? We're losing him. We're losing him. What did you hand me? What was in that store? Okay, hey, Claire. Claire! Tachycardias. Hi, I'm Mark from ACLS Certification Institute, and today we have the cure for your tachycardia nightmares. A generalized overview and approach to all tachycardias. So let's get started. Now remember, a tachycardia is any rate, ventricular rate, over 100. 150 is the magic number in ACLS. When a tachycardia hits 150 or greater, then there's a greater chance that the tachycardia is caused by a true heart problem. If the tachycardia is less than 150, it may be caused by something else. Um, dehydration, anxiety, some other cause other than a primary cardiac event. So again, 150 is kind of the magic number we're looking at. First thing you're going to assess for always is is your patient stable or unstable. Any unstable tachycardia is going to receive some form of electrical therapy. Whether it's narrow complex, wide complex, regular, irregular, low fat, sugar free, doesn't matter. A symptomatic, hypotensive patient showing signs of shock with a tachycardic rhythm above 150 is going to receive electrical therapy. So first, is the patient stable or unstable? Right there, that's going to guide your therapy. Unstable patients showing serious signs of shock, hypotension, we go to electrical therapy. They're either going to need synchronized cardioversion or defibrillation depending on the rhythm. If the patient's stable, of course, we have some more time. We have some wiggle room. We can get a 12 lead EKG, do further investigation to determine what the underlying rhythm really is. Next, is the rhythm wide or narrow complex? Remember, wide complex has a QRS greater than 0.12 seconds. Next, is the rhythm regular or irregular? Now, if you notice in our videos, we use dynamic strips. We're showing you a strip that you would actually see on a monitor while you're treating a patient. Every patient, you're not printing out a strip and looking at it while you're treating them. You're looking at the monitor as you're treating the patient. And a lot of this, you're going to be taking all in one big shot, but we still need an organized approach to it. So step one, is the patient stable or unstable? Second, is the complex wide or narrow? After that, is the rhythm regular or irregular? Looking at it in this order will help you quickly and more accurately get to the appropriate treatment for this patient. Now in ACLS, we learn about treating rhythms. In the real world, we don't treat rhythms. We treat patients that have rhythms. For example, you could have the same tachycardia in two different patients with completely different etiologies. Same tachycardic rhythm, one is caused by a primary cardiac event, and the other patient is caused by a drug reaction. There's some other cause. So we don't treat rhythms. We treat patients that have rhythms. Now, earlier on in some of the earlier narrow complex tachycardia videos, as soon as the patient lost a pulse, they went into the PEA algorithm, and that's where they would fit. And it's in the PEA algorithm that we really start to look at the H's and the T's. What's the underlying cause of this arrest? We really need to be doing that sooner. It's not like we work in this guy. Suddenly he loses a pulse, and the doctor says, oh, hang on a second, wait a minute. So this is getting serious. Let's step back and take a look at this for a moment. We should have been doing that two, three algorithms ago. Look at your H's and T's sooner. Every patient is different. Why did this patient cardiac arrest? Find the cause and treat that sooner. As soon as the patient lost a pulse, we went into the arrest PEA algorithm. Because that's where the, that word, that's, 